you can say, look, they're going to lose $3 billion. They lost $2.1 billion last year. A huge amount of money the automaker's EV business has lost. Ford says it lost $3 billion before taxes over the past two years. It's all over for Ford. Is Ford really going bankrupt? Ford CEO Jim Farley might have made a really big mistake that could ruin Ford. Ford's dealers are treating customers badly, and the Ford workers are on strike, asking for more money and shorter work hours, which could make things even worse. Ford is also losing $3 billion because not many people are buying their EVs. In the first quarter of the year, they lost a lot of money on each EV they sold. Ford used to be known for making affordable cars, but now they're trying to compete with luxury car brands, which is hurting their finances. Jim Farley's leadership is in trouble, and we're going to explore what went wrong. So, what is really happening? What brought such a monumental car maker to this stage? Keep watching, as in this video will clear your doubts and confusions about it. Ford is not doing well in the EV race, and they're losing money on every EV they sell. On top of that, they're dealing with a worker strike that could cost them over $5 billion. In 2022, Ford lost $2 billion even though they launched the F-150 Lightning electric truck. They had problems like dealers' high markups, unhappy customers, and tough competition from Tesla. Their plan for different types of cars like Ford Blue, Model E, and Ford Pro is also being questioned. Adam Jonas, an analyst from Morgan Stanley, thinks Ford will lose money while Tesla makes a profit. Ford hopes to make an 8% profit by 2026, but they made a $2 billion loss in their EV business in 2022. Making EVs cost too much money, even though Ford Pro, a business unit within Ford dedicated to serving commercial customers, including small businesses, fleet operators, and government agencies, thinks they can make a big profit. Dealers charging too much, competition, and higher interest rates are making things worse. What we've noticed commercially is that most of the established companies are failing on the EV side, said Farley. Well, Tesla is doing good, and in 2022, they made three times more money than Ford. When Tesla lowered the prices of their Model 3 cars by 4%, Ford raised the prices of their Mustang Mach-E, and this hurt their stock. In Europe, Ford is trying to sell cars directly to customers, like Tesla does, to make customers happier. The United Auto Workers Union, or UAW, which represents a lot of auto industry workers in the U.S., started talking with Ford, General Motors, and Stellantis about their jobs in July 2023. Their work contracts were going to end on September 14, 2023. The UAW made a proposal to Ford about money stuff, like asking for a 46% raise in wages, a 20% raise right away, and more raises every year. They also want good pensions for all workers, shorter work weeks, and more money when the cost of living goes up. We want them to end tears because everybody deserves to make a livable wage, said Candace Holmes, who worked at Ford for eight years. Ford said they would give a 9% raise every year until 2027, which was much less than what the UAW wanted. The UAW said they would go on strike if the car companies didn't agree to a new deal by the contract end date. The UAW is being more forceful under their new leader, Sean Fain. They're speaking out against companies being greedy and are ready to go on strike. The UAW has a lot of money saved up for strikes. The new leaders of the union want to change the way they work with big car companies and want EV workers to get paid as much as fossil fuel car workers. They also accused GM and Stellantis of not negotiating fairly. Ford and the UAW have had a big disagreement. Ford didn't agree with what the UAW wanted, like not putting a limit on temporary workers and giving them worse health benefits. Ford said they already pay those workers more than foreign companies like Honda. CNBC said this strike might cost $5 billion in just a few weeks. And if things go really bad, the companies like Ford, Stellantis, and GM might have to pay over $8 billion together. Ford is trying hard to stop the UAW from from striking. Ford and the UAW talked about this at Ford's headquarters in Dearborn. Ford gave a better contract proposal that focused on things like wages and bonuses. Ford wanted to make a deal before September 14th to avoid a strike. Their first offer included a 5% raise in the first year, and bonuses for both permanent and temporary workers. But the UAW president, Sean Fain, didn't like it and said it was disrespectful. 
The people negotiating have been working really hard, even starting early in the morning and going late into the night. Important people from both sides, like UAW Vice President Chuck Browning, have been part of the talks. Ford CEOs Jim Farley and Executive Chair Bill Ford have been involved as well. Ford is different from other companies like General Motors and Stellantis because they keep their production in the US. They make their F-Series trucks in the US and sell a lot of cars here. Ford wants to show they care about their workers. They're giving temporary workers full-time jobs and making TV ads to tell people about it. They're also spending a lot of money to build EVs and save money on regular engines. They're also asking dealers to lower the cost of delivering EVs. Initially, Unifor, the Canadian union representing Ford workers, reached a tentative deal with Ford, averting a strike that could have impacted key Ford products. This deal comes amidst ongoing labor strikes in the US by the United Auto Workers. Both unions have similar concerns, primarily around wages, benefits, and job security, which came with the shift to electric vehicles. But even with all these efforts at the time of this video production, the UAW strike has gone on for a couple of days, and it involves 12,700 workers demanding higher pay and the end of a two-tiered pay system. Strikes have disrupted production, and the UAW warns of extending the strike if their demands aren't met. If Unifor had proceeded with their strike in Canada, it could have had a significant effect on Ford's production. We've leveraged our union's most powerful weapon, the right to strike. Unifor said in its statement on Tuesday evening. Auto workers feel like they're facing money problems, especially since Ford is losing a lot of money in their EV business. This strike could be really bad for Ford and might even make them go out of business. In addition to that, at the Wall Street Journal's Future of Everything conference, Ford CEO Jim Farley admitted they lack the talent needed for the next generation digital and EV revolution and can't source it all internally. Farley even mentioned this is the hard part. I'm not sure we can upskill everyone. I don't think they're going to make it, Farley said. There's a new skill set we're going to need, and I don't think I can teach everyone. It will take too much time. So there's going to be a disruption in this transition. Ford's EV initiatives are financially struggling, with their expensive models seeing low sales. Despite significant investments, their EVs aren't popular among consumers. Ford loses $32,000 on each EV sold. While CEO Jim Farley portrays Ford as a resilient automotive company, Ford's future looks uncertain given these losses. This information was part of a big financial report where Ford said they would lose a staggering $4.5 billion in 2023 from their EV business, which they call Model E. This is more than they originally thought, which was $3 billion. Just in the second quarter of the year, they lost $1.8 billion. And now they're going to figure out how to make fewer EVs. Ford's plan was to make 600,000 EVs every year by the end of 2023. But now they're saying it will be 2024, or even later. Their dream of making 2 million EVs in a year by 2026 doesn't have a specific date anymore. Ford CEO Jim Farley doesn't seem too worried about the delay. He says that people will start buying EVs a bit slower than they thought. And he thinks they will actually help Ford because they're already in the game. I found out that people who buy electric vehicles just want really good vehicles, Farley said at an event. They don't want science projects, they want really great products. Ford sold only 34,000 electric and hybrid cars in the second quarter, and they need to sell around 100,000 of these cars every three months to make a profit. It seems like Ford is in a tough situation. They have to spend a lot of money on EVs, but they can't make money until they sell a lot more of them. Plus, they're in a pricing battle with Tesla, which makes things even harder. So what can Ford do to move forward? Adam Jonas thinks Ford needs to make big changes to its strategy. He suggests that Ford should consider working closely with big EV companies like Tesla to make things work better. According to him, you know, if you can't beat them, join them. Ford dealerships are under scrutiny for overcharging, leading to growing discontent with the brand. Higher prices, unexpected fees, and pressure sales tactics have left many customers disgruntled. Word of mouth and social media backlash have infested the issue. This, coupled with the challenges in the EV market, puts Ford in a tight spot. To rival competitors like Tesla, Ford must strategize effectively for its EV lineup, keeping customer preferences in mind. So Ford is facing some big problems, and it's important for them to make the right decisions to fix them. So what do you think about Ford's situation? Do you think Ford can overcome this situation and take over the industry again? Let us know in the comments and make sure to subscribe and turn on the notification bell for more updates on the EV industry. Thanks for watching.